Welcome to Convo Fango today. We are joined by Cassandra Peterson, and we are talking about, I can't believe I'm saying this, The Death of Elvira, comic book from Dynamite. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you for, for, for joining us. I am yeah, very sad. In the grave. Yeah. <laughs> well, but okay, well, that's cool, though. It's sad, but cool. Yeah, well, I do it all the time, so, you know. No. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You, you do do this all the time, and uh, you do comics too. You're not new to the world of comics. You've appeared in over a hundred comics. I think since the birth of Elvira, you've done DC, Claypool, Dynamite. Uh, but is this the first time you've attended like Elvira's funeral wake? It is. It, when when they first came to me with the idea, um, my manager and I were kind of like, "Hell, I don't know." <laughs> 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 that's, really, that's something we really want to uh, put out there, you know, because, uh, you know, maybe they'll just think my career is dead, you know, who knows. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we were a little skeptical, but when, when uh, David, uh, like, walked us through it and they walked us through it and told us how it was going to be, uh, we changed our mind completely. And uh, the way it was written, uh, the way, you know, David came up with the whole idea, I thought was hysterically funny. And it was a big, splashy thing to do for Elvira's 40th anniversary. Yeah, that was the, when I, when I wrote the initial email, I was very careful to say, she's going to die like Superman dies, okay? It's going to be fine. <laughs> she's, she's coming back, I swear to God. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind of. yeah. Also, David, I'm so sorry. I'm so rude. I did not introduce you because I didn't That's know that we okay. had you on the call as well. And I was like, oh, this is exciting. I get both of you. Okay, so the writer. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Yes. You. Hi. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. I promise you, I'm not usually this rude. I didn't realize that I got to chat, chat with both of you this morning. I apologize. That's, that's okay. Uh, no, no worries. <laughs> and and David pretty much has all the answers too, because he's the guy doing all the heavy lifting. I'm just uh, commenting over here from the peanut gallery usually. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm allergic to nuts, so that's unfortunate. But <laughs> uh, okay, I'm commenting from the um, tofu gallery. <laughs> okay, that works. <laughs> so we would pretty very, quiet over, very quiet over there in the tofu gallery. I don't know what that <laughs> <is>. <laughs> happening here. It's very restful. Well, I, you know, I was a little skeptical as well when I read the title, the, the Death of Elvira, and I was like, mm, "What is like? What is happening here? What's this going to be?" But I ended up loving it, and a cool concept because you kind of get to Tom Sawyer it in a sense. You kind of got to attend Elvira's funeral and see what that would be like mm-hmm. in a graphic sense, right? Yeah, I mean, David, you want to address that? Yeah, I, I mean, the, you know, the idea came about largely because it was the 40th anniversary. And to me, that seems to call for a retrospective. And Cassandra wasn't done writing her memoir yet. Uh, so I did have to, we went out for drinks and she told me as many stories as we could fit into two or three martinis. And then, you know, uh, I went home and sort of fashioned that into a rough, uh, We'll do this, then we'll do this, we'll do Vegas, we'll do Rome, we'll do Paris for a minute, uh, all that. And, uh, and yeah, I, it just seemed like the best way to do an overall, uh, and the murder mystery aspect is, you know, it needed a plot. <laughs> it, needed <laughs> some de- it some, needed some degree of conflict and menace and all of that. So, uh, all that, all that evolved pretty, pretty naturally. And I, I, you know, I, as always, I, I kept, Cassandra in the loop with all of those thoughts and ideas and what was going in and what wasn't going in and all that. I loved it so much because this could have just been done as sort of like a graphic novel version of the memoirs, like like highlights from the memoirs, right? But you threw that murder mystery aspect in, so it's like, oh, it's a yeah, fun we, plot storyline. <laughs> yeah, we just we thought it would be a fun way to do it and you know, it's an Elvira comic. It's not a Cassandra Peterson comic. Mm -hmm. So I thought the funny idea was to map Cassandra's life onto Elvira's and go, you know, the sort of the, what if is what if all of these things happen to uh, Elvira instead of Cassandra Peterson and the joke of like, she's wearing the black dress her entire life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, she's, she's wearing it doing, you know, wine and, yeah, she's wearing it doing a kick line in Vegas. She's wearing it as a pop star in Rome. Like the idea, and no one ever says, "Hey, what are you? You know, what's, what's that about?" 
You know, <laughs> no, uh, I that just the way David combined that. I mean, the way it, you know, it was Elvira that she had all these weird experiences, which, you know, it, it's, people keep telling me I'm, my autobiography is like Forrest Gump or something. And you know, when I look back at it, I go, God, it kind of is. That's weird. Life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. It, it was, uh, I, I wasn't sure how he was really going to do it, but he did it. I think he did it perfectly. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. it was this really cool blending of, of fact and fiction. Like, I've, I've read your memoirs, so I know that a lot of this is pulled from Cassandra's experiences, but it's like elements of Cassandra yeah. blended with the fantasy character of Elvira, and that's kind of what Elvira is anyway, right? She's like elements of actual Cassandra blended with this like completely fantastical character, and you like brought that alive in the comics, which is really awesome. Yep, he's good. He's good. He gets it. He gets <laughs> Thank you. And it's great working with him because I have to do um, much less work than I would <laughs> working with a lot of other people. I can tell you that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, how do you guys co-write this at all, or do you like run the jokes by like? Does David write the jokes and then Cassandra? You look at them and because it's very quippy and it's very Elvira. Like all the jokes are these very zingy kind of like one-liners. Yeah. No, David does a fantastic job. I mean, I I was saying, and I you know what? We've done so many interviews. Am I? I, I don't know if I'm repeating myself again. We haven't we haven't talked about this yet on this interview. Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, like, you know, I, I when I first. That David, or we didn't actually meet in person, but they they said, oh, he's going to be writing the comics, and he wrote the first one. I was like, oh my god, this guy totally hit the character, you know, on the head. I mean, it's just perfect, and I was positive he was gay because, you know, <laughs> about it, a drag queen, and everything she says is very campy, and you really have a have to have a certain sensibility to write for Elvira. Believe me, I have worked with writers over the years who like so didn't get it and then the ones that really did usually turned out to be gay men so I was sure David was gay <laughs> until we uh, met up and had drinks with his beautiful wife who's a burlesque dancer and and I'm like what the hell <laughs> I didn't know well and I feared for a minute or what was going on but but, um, but yeah David gets it he gets the character and I Basically, just he writes it. I go back through the writing portion of it. I add anything I can, which is usually not very much because David has done all the heavy lifting. And uh, I, but I do make comments uh, about things I like, things I don't. Add maybe a joke or two once in a while. And uh, I don't have to do that much. But and then we go back, and then they submit the the drawings, and then finally the ink drawings and then the writing. So we go back and forth uh, a lot and I just basically okay it or don't okay particular <laughs> <laughs> Generally, I okay 99% of it, really. It's always done really well. I'm oh, curious about you. the yeah, 1%. Yeah, usually, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's usually a couple of uh, joke alternatives. Uh, also, uh, Cassandra will always uh, push things a little dirtier. <laughs> I, am sometimes, I, I am sometimes, I am sometimes more protective of her than she is. There's a moment in the Omega Shocking. Ma'am. There's a moment in the Omega Ma'am where her character is, uh, in a hospital gown wandering around. And there was a word, there was a, there was a sentence in there of like, did everybody leave me behind? And she said, you're going to show my ass poking out of the hospital gown when I say, did everybody leave me behind, right? <laughs> and I actually hadn't contemplated uh, telling Dave Acosta to draw Elvira's ass into the comic, but uh, Cassandra insisted. I know. We're and, you know, as, right? Yeah. And as we're, as we're doing this, I'm like, everybody's going to think Abalone's a dirty old man showing his boss's ass in the comic. <laughs> because he's a dirty old man. I'm like, no, I had to be talked into it, actually. Uh, by no, by the ass in question. A bit. No, I'm just a yeah. dirty young man. No, I, I mean, you know, I, I wear that with pride. I, I don't think I could do this work if I wasn't at least somewhat of a dirty old man, so it's fine. Yeah. But, Slightly, uh, you're a little bit of a perv, all right? But really, because yeah, yeah, a dirty it's, old it's, man is the real thing here. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and actually, like, when we talk about the, you know, gay writers and drag queens thing, it is to me, the thing that defines the Elvira voice and honestly why it comes easily to me, I think, is in spite of the drag queen aspect, in spite of the sassy, beautiful young woman aspect, 
The Voice is actually a 60-year-old Jewish Catskill <laughs> stand-up comic doing the set where he get where he's going to get a little blue, send the kids out of the room. Uh, you know, so that's the that's the joke is it's this beautiful, slender young woman uh, who is talking like she's chomping on a cigar at three in the morning, you know, uh, standing on stage with a microphone. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like Henny Youngman uh, combined yeah. with RuPaul. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the my my go to would be would be Mel Brooks, but yeah, it's it's that it's it's that kind of character. It if you can draw if you can write Mel Brooks if he was a sexy woman, that's the character. Wow, that's so that's yeah, it's hard to it's hard to imagine. <laughs> it does take a leap, but uh, but yeah. But that's why it works so well, right? Like you see Elvira, and you're like your predisposition to the one thing. And then you open your yeah. mouth and you're saying these jokes and you're like, your brain is like, wait, what is happening right now? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've talked about this before that it's the, the, the uniqueness, the thing that Cassandra invented is that that character is always, always the character that looks like that in a hammer movie, in the Adams family is always a very sedate, almost in a trance languid European, classy but butter, butter wouldn't melt in her mouth kind of character <laughs> and Cassandra does the exact dot looks like that looks like she looks like she's standing in a hallway with a candelabra startling <laughs> Peter Cushing but that's not what she's doing at all she's being startled by Peter Cushing and telling a dirty joke to him and all that and that's the and I will say that every time I push what for me is the envelope every time I write the dirtiest joke I can think of and I sit and I look at it and I go, should I do? Yeah, fine. Let's do it. That is always the panel that I see screen grabbed on Instagram. <laughs> like whatever joke I was, whatever joke I spent a half hour going, uh, that's really kind of gross. Are we going to, in the first issue when she meets, uh, she runs into Mary Shelley and she's time traveling using a coffin. It's very goofy, but Mary Shelley says we were looking for our friend when we came across your coffin. And Elvira says, "Well, I hope you toweled it off afterwards." That's a that's a that is a that is a disgusting joke. <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't get it, David. Can you explain to me? I don't understand why I, that's disgusting. <laughs> I will not, young lady. Ask your ask your guidance counselor or school nurse uh, David, to explain that joke. You. You're, oh, you're really gross. Oh, I don't know if you should. It's up to you. With your gross uh, title could. that you had. I think for Omega Man, uh, that, oh, that what was, on. what was, no, it wasn't for the Omega Man. I think it was for the sequel. Now I'm trying to remember, uh, what the hell was that? Do you remember what it was? No, I just remember that. Oh. I was like, okay, no, no, we can't go there. We had a really, we had a really filthy, we had a really filthy joke for the, for the sequel to the Omega Man. And I can't remember what the hell it was. It'll, <laughs> Yeah, it it'll called, come to me. Tell, tell David he went too far. Uh, that was the, yeah. the first. Of I was like this, and I think me. even when I said it, I think even when I wrote it, I was like, "Yeah, I know we're not going to do this, but it's really <laughs> fucking." Oh, I know what it was. I know oh. what it was. Okay, so the sequel to the Omega Man, right? It's a sequel to a science fiction movie, and it's vaguely post-apocalyptic. So I started going through post-apocalyptic titles. And I said, okay, so we're going to call the sequel The Chode Warrior. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, I know. Right? <laughs> yeah. Come on, you're laughing. It's a great <laughs> title. I laughed and then it, I went, ew. Yeah, I, I just absolutely absolutely recoil at the word chode, though. I'm like, oh, God. Like, oh, I sure. laugh, but then I'm like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, and, and, yeah. and also, <laughs> P.S. P.S. It had absolutely nothing to do with the plot of that issue. Uh, in the way that the Omega Mam was actually pretty, and the Omega Mam, I have to say, that was Dave Acosta. I think I wrote him and said, "Yeah, it's going to be called the uh, the Omega Woman or the Last Sex Symbol on Earth," or like I came up with a bunch of goofy titles, and he said the Omega Mam, and I was like, "Oh Jesus, that's oh, so yeah, that's that's clever I, shit." That's I just that's that's that title, David. <laughs> what the Omega Mams. Oh, the Omega Mams? Yeah, that would have been another way to go. There you go. See, we can always Definitely. make boob jokes in there. Where, <laughs> yeah. Never, yeah. Never, we can always count on you for a well-placed boob joke. 
<laughs> but yeah, that was the that that is the one time Cassandra told me that I had gone too far. Was the Chode Warrior? <laughs> yeah, Chode is where which is where she draws the line. Yeah, no, I really draw the line somewhere. Dynamite was not going to release a comic book with the word Chode on the cover. I might be able to get away with her saying it. Like, that could be a throwaway line, you know, calling someone a chode warrior or something. But I, the title in solicits in Diamond, I don't think that is going to happen. <laughs> Thanks, As someone who, who uses lots of offensive words, um, you know, chode is really one of that. I'm like, oh, no. Like, I just don't even. <laughs> I don't mess with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It's on the it's band list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, you know, I have to say also the peanut style flashback was fantastic. <laughs> Oh, my God. I laughed so hard when I saw her drawing of that. Um, and David was just mentioning a little bit ago that that he had to talk to um, the artist, Sylvia, right? Yeah, Sylvia Califano. Yeah, Sylvia Califano. And she had, he had to talk to her about, you know, how are we going to do Elvira as a child? I mean, you don't want her to have a lot of cleavage and everything because that looks like, you know... <laughs> Um, yeah. So the fact that she came up with that and then gone. Yeah, she looks like Snoopy just killed yeah. me. That was brilliant. Absolutely yeah, I brilliant. Even, I got. I like I almost screamed, screamed when I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't even had the conversation. Sylvia is an amazing collaborator. Uh, she brings so much to the table. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this yet, uh, Cassandra, but in uh, the next series that we have coming out after this is called uh, Elvira in Horrorland. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Elvira, without doing too much explanation, Elvira winds up living in the movie Psycho. And there's yeah. a panel where there's a panel where she's talking to Norman Bates about the showers, and the background behind her is the music staff, the musical notations of the stabbing. Oh my God! Bernard Herman's Bernard Her- Herman's actual physical score for the murder scene in Psycho is the background to Elvira's close-up while she's thinking about the showers at the base motel. And that's just, the, you can't buy that kind of genius. You can't buy that kind of, like, she's so dedicated to the material. She really cares about Elvira and Cassandra, and she brings so much to the table. And yeah, she just sent me that Peanuts cartoon. She sent me one panel of Elvira as Lucy Peanuts and... Cartoon. And yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> Wait, is this back to the chode? The chode? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I hung up on that. <laughs> yeah. Chode, 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 as drawn by Chode Schultz. Uh, yeah. No, so it was, uh, I, I had the same reaction you, you guys all did. I laughed my ass off and that is all Sylvia. It was something I was intending to have a conversation with her about. And she said, so for the flashback, I was thinking this. And the next page, it's less incredibly obvious but there's one panel of elvira as a teenager and it's a tim burton-esque you know uh nightmare before christmas style vincent frankenweenie style drawing uh so so she did that it's a a little more than just the one peanut page but it's a way more subtle distinction (laughs) sorry (laughs) <laughs> this is the all yeah. we need all chodes issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, this is what we're gonna call this episode. We need and chodes with the Sandra yeah. and David. <laughs> 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 oh, <Johnny. laughs> Are you guys hey, wanna right. share anything else with us before we go? Preferably not chode related, but I mean who am I yeah, really right, right, right. talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, David has like you said another awesome comic book in the works, but I'm really happy with, with uh, the current one, the death of Elvira, because I think it really celebrates, you know, Elvira's 40th, you know, 40th anniversary. And it's like, where do you go with that, you know, to make it really big and splashy. And so uh, I think it was the perfect vehicle. And I think fans are going to really, really like it. Yeah. Yeah. And they can, you know, and again, they can play, sometimes it's super obvious, but they can play, who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Uh, with some of the celebrity cameos, because we don't say anyone's name. The caricatures are all in there, but nobody actually gets their real name said out loud. Uh, and we bring back characters from the, 
We've had a filmmaker character named Floyd Mankoff, who is very transparently Lloyd Kaufman since the first issue. I dragged Floyd back into it. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a fun bunch. And yeah, that's, uh, I think that ends. I don't know when this is going to, when your podcast is going to go live, but it's, uh, the, it's eight days from now that the Elvira, uh, Death of Elvira comic Indiegogo ends, and I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get your hands on this after the Indiegogo, so people should definitely check it out. Okay, we will try to get this up very soon, um, but this is, so it's available through 15th of April at midnight, is that right? The death of Elvira on Indiegogo. Yeah. Okay. Which is oh, like tax day. Oh, yep. oh shit, <laughs> I, I still gotta do that too. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chodes and taxes, which is worse. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 nothing certain in life except chodes and taxes. <laughs> chodes and taxes. There, there's the title. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Fingoria exclusive. Oh, oh God. Thanks, Angel. I don't know. About, okay. <laughs> because <laughs> Honda says, oh, I used to like you. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> You know, David, I really used to like Angel, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I got to get on. back in your good graces. Oh, no. I'm still, I'm holding you to officiate my wedding, which you offered. So I need to uh, oh, get back perfect. in your good graces. Okay, I'll be there. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. You guys are so much fun to chat with. I appreciate it. Oh, our pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for doing this, Angel. Of course. Death of Elvira comic available on Indiegogo right now through the 15th of April at the stroke of midnight, naturally.